Hola a todos, it is I, uh, your favorite Dean and your favorite Tia, Ileana Perez. Jada, mm-hmm. Phoenix, Lores. I'm so glad you got that in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> Do people really get it wrong? All the time. Oh. I have been Jada, Phoenix, Lorax. I have been Jada, Phoenix, Lores. It's like, it's very pick a struggle around here. Okay. Delicious calls me, Delicious Millie on uh-huh. Cincinnati. She calls me Jada Lores Phoenix. <laughs> It's fully just juggling oh, at no. this point. <laughs> Ever since I met you, bitch, which I, ugh, I love this bitch. Don't age us. Don't okay, age us. Okay, listen, I, don't <laughs> worry, I won't. Babies. I was just going to say that even though I've only known you for a very little amount of time. A good year and a half. Good year and a half. <laughs> a good month. A good month or so. Um, you are just ugh, such a joy, oh, such a light you. to be around with. <laughs> and... Uh, your name is unique to me, honestly. It's like Jada Phoenix Lores. Like, it just rolls off the tongue to me. I'm glad, because it took a really long time to get to. <laughs> yeah. So, talking about drag and your name. Okay. How did drag enter your life? 
Okay, so when I originally was interested in drag, I found it by accident. Okay. Um, because my dad had just gotten the extended package from WOW. <gasps> okay. The cable company, not uh -huh. Presents Plus. Right, right. okay. Um, from WOW, and it involved Logo. So, so back, very, okay, back when it was the logo. first season of Drag Race, <laughs> I was like in the ninth grade. So, like, I watched the whole journey of Bibi Zahara Benet winning, and it was the first time that I had ever seen another black drag queen mm -hmm. do anything. Because, like, at the time you heard about RuPaul, and, right. like, every now and again she, like, showed up on MTV or right. was randomly on VH1, and it was never necessarily in a positive light. Mm -hmm. So, watching the entire competition and then watching this woman that looked exactly like me but had bigger lips and I was kind of mad about. Um, <laughs> but like this girl that really looked like me mm -hmm. being in a positive light, being a queer person and then being someone who cross-dressed was so monumental to me. Um, so I was like, no, if that hoe can do that shit, then I can too. Exactly. Um, and so then I was like, well, I have to figure out how to do this because I'm very strategic when I do shit. So then I had to figure out how I was going to functionally be like, now I'm going to go do what this girl just did. And I didn't realize that involved a whole lot of other things that I did not sign up for. But nonetheless, we got there eventually. <laughs> so ninth grade, RuPaul's mm -hmm. Drag Race. That's how drag entered your life. Mm -hmm. And Maria Garrison. And Maria Garrison. <laughs> okay. So. I figured this is the story you want to uh, see. I know. <laughs> okay, now I want to know. Now I want to know. So at the time. How did you start to weigh drag this thing? Because, bitch. So at the time, I was underage. But because okay. I was a fucking giant, uh -huh. no one really questioned it. Because um, you can't really stare at a six foot teenager in the face and be like, you don't belong when you're letting Tittyless McGee in the bar, too. <laughs> so, because I was so tall, a lot of folks assumed that I was older than what I really was. And I distinctively remember watching Maria Garrison at Trade Winds 2. Trade Winds 2. Completely, well, naked. Um, she had on, like, her undergarments. And she was in a split across some tables <laughs> doing the remainder of her number. And I was so confused, <laughs> but so intrigued at the same time that I was just like, you can get away with this shit <laughs> in like, in the venue. Like people are looking at you. You're like, I want to do this. Oh, it changed my life. So I was like, oh, I can do this. And then I didn't meet Maria again for years. I didn't meet Maria Garrison again until she was Miss uh, Gay U.S. of A. at large. Okay. Which wore that red gown with uh -huh. the big barrels on the side. Yeah. I didn't meet her until her step down, where she did Funkier Than a Mosquito's Tweeter by Nina Simone and did a backflip and landed in front of my table. And that's how I recognized her, was in said split <laughs> in front of my table. Not recognizing in the position, bitch. I was you like, better. Yeah, it's in the position, you're gonna be like, that's the same girl I saw in that bar across the table. Like, wait a minute. Oh, 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 hold up. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's been my follow up to dress. Which now, I think that a lot of folks will now be like, that's why she's a menace to society. Because <laughs> look at her references. <laughs> I mean, first of all, where did you learn that from? <laughs> um, so I was a gymnast before I was a drag queen. Okay, work. So flexibility, athletic. It's more okay. like audacity. Audacity. <laughs> okay, the audacity. Because flexibility is not necessarily a thing. Because I'll hurt myself and then like play it off until the show's over. And then I'm just soaking in oh Epsom salt and ice for the next like three days. <laughs> Uh, I believe you. But no one up front has to know that, bitch. All they yes. saw was this bitch toss herself across so the stage. effortlessly. Effortlessly. Oh, no, there was effort. <laughs> <laughs> there was definitely effort. <laughs> you made it look effortlessly. Well, thank you. It, bitch, anytime you step on that stage is... Mm, well, thank you. You know the bitch is there. How you know is he Jada's But this is why you drink a lot, too. Because then it loosens up the muscle. It's like lube. True. It just kind of loosens up the you muscles. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here. Okay? Drink. Drink. <laughs> if you want to perform. Drink. you need a muscle relaxer. If you want to do some stunts you're questionable about, drink. Drink. So, 
As far as I can remember, <laughs> and as long as I've known you, I've known you to be quite a competitive bitch. I like it. Oh, I like, I it. like it. I mean, who does that like it's to compete? It's my guilty prep. It's literally my guilty pleasure. Like, competing is just like, it gives you this adrenaline, right? Yes, because it's like, it's very high stakes. It's like, if I lose, but you really had to rock my shit for me to lose. But, bitch, if I win, I want to feel like that bitch for exactly. the next, like, at least 30 days. And then I come back down to reality and be like, no, there was probably some other shit that was involved. Right. But yeah, no, that's all. Oh, I love competing. Because so regarding competing, that means that you are into some pageantry beach. I am. OK, now, before we get into your pageantry experience. OK. Did you do any type of competing before that? Because you said you were in yes. gym. So gymnastics. I was a gymnast before right. I was a drag queen. OK, OK. Um, which. I was a gymnast and I wanted to be a cheerleader. Ooh. But the gag was, them whores told me that they wouldn't let boys be at the top of the pyramid. Hmm. Do you know how insulting that is when you're the thinnest person on the team? (laughs) You are legitimately the thinnest person on the entire team. And so you expect me to be the fucking boulder to hold up these goddamn granite bricks. <laughs> but a bitch can't be at the top because we have she meat. Cinder blogs. We'll get to her in a moment. <laughs> but yeah, they were like, no, you can't be at the top of the pyramid if you're a boy. And oh. I was like, oh, well then fuck this. And they're like, are you serious? Completely. Mm. Bitch, I wanted to be at the top like. Yeah, you wanted for your fantasy, I want to have that picture of my mom being like, God damn it. And like <laughs> dealing. But like. What you mean boys can't be at the top of the pyramid? And this is before, like, being trans or non-binary was, like, a global phenomenon. Right. So I was like, bitch, you have no defense because you're just, like, the gay boy at the school. And you're like, trash. <laughs> but you want me to lift you fucking goliaths in the goddamn air. <laughs> Bet. Mm. But so I was a gymnast before I was a drag queen. Uh-huh. Um, part of the reason that I'm as problematic as I am is because I was on debate team. <laughs> So I never learned how to, like, love properly. I just learned how to argue efficiently. (laughs) Work, bitch. We love an efficient arguer. Um, Yeah. Actually, like, as wild as it has been for my relationships, it's been great for pageantry. Uh Uh-huh. Because then you, like, you learn things like how to effectively problem solve and things of that nature. But it's also one of those things where you can kind of, like, um, flash the air that you're very aware of what you're doing and uh-huh. giving like warning shots to everyone around you. Literally. Like, this is not what you want. Exactly. <laughs> you might as well go ahead and accept the fact that I know what I'm talking about and this is what's going to happen. Exactly. Um, which is garbage and y'all shouldn't do it. But, but... I did and that was my experience. <laughs> so like these are just things that I had learned over the years which have kind of created the persona that a lot of people see. Um, but I, I love a good competition. I love being proved wrong, which a lot of people don't think that I do. I like being proved wrong. Okay. Because, like, mentally, I have to know before I even start an argument that I'm right. Because the way I'm going to argue mean, but, is going to be so aggressive. <laughs> right, because you want to be sure of yourself, right? I mean, that's, that's accurate. It's going to be so aggressive that I'm like, the only way that I can really monitor this is being like, I know I'm right. Yeah, so, so if you're going to come here? for me, let me come correct, right? Yeah, and then I'd be wrong. And then you're like, just sitting there stuck on stupid and parked on dumb. Because then you're like, fuck, no, I really am wrong. So how am I either A, going to accept responsibility for this, which realistically speaking, I have enough delusion to get past that. Um, (laughs) So how am I going to argue my way out of being wrong? And that's the fun part. Is when you know you're wrong and everyone else thinks that you still think you're right. Right. Mm -hmm. It's all the confidence. The is so real. Um, (laughs) Listen, growing up in my household, gaslighting was just like the skill to have. Oh, Absolutely. So I got you on that one. Being a brown person, you're like, how can I gaslight everyone around me? Mm -hmm. Just to make sure that I'm safe. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, trauma. (laughs) And that's on what? Trauma. (laughs) (laughs) So pageantry. Mm -hmm. So uh, from gymnastics over to uh, competing 
in pageantry as this phenomenon of a drag entertainer that you oh, are. You. Like, <laughs> how did you... I know, like, you said you like to compete. Mm -hmm. So... What else brought you to pageantry, especially in drag? Because it's so specific. I think that was the thing, was being... I think a lot of times when you think about competitions as a whole, especially when you start talking about, like, the backgrounds that I do come from, mm -hmm. there's so many different gray areas. And so I'm bipolar. Okay. Like, diagnosed bipolar, not okay. just, like, on Instagram bipolar. Um, <laughs> but, like, I'm actually bipolar. So I only deal in absolutes. <laughs> Okay. So I deal in being absolutely right or absolutely wrong. So it's really hard sometimes for me to deal with some of those gray areas. But mm -hmm. with pageantry, it was kind of my bridge between the two um, of having moments of being like, okay, yes, you did well in this category, but you lost the pageant because you did really terrible in these other ones. And that made logical sense because it was so rigid. Gotcha. And being there was like, a well, structure there. Yeah, there was a very clear structure. Understood. And so okay. it was like, okay, well, if you won gown, lost presentation, lost on stage question, but won talent. Well, talent's half your score. <laughs> So at that moment, it was a numbers game. And yeah. that was something tangible to right. me. And so having those moments of being like, these are things that I can understand that I can now attempt to apply to other things. Because even in pageantry where it's, these are a specific point category, even when you think about things like your day job, right. you have things in your day job that are higher priority mm -hmm. than other things. So it made it really easy to kind of functionally work through a lot of other things in my life, but being like, okay, well, the priority is this, mm -hmm. and then this, and then this, and then this. So it made it really easy to kind of structure things. So pageantry always made sense to me because it was so rigid. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Work. Wow. That I did not know that. I definitely did not know that about you. I just you. drink a lot to cover it up because I don't like medicine. But like, I just be like, mm, it is what it is. Listen, <laughs> medicine's not for everyone and that's okay. Medicine. It, <laughs> cheers to that bitch. Cheers, 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 cheers. But I, um, honestly, when I think of pageantry, especially here in Columbus, mm. which pageantry is such a big thing in Columbus, um, one of the names that I immediately think of is you. Oh, thanks. Not only because I've seen you um, compete, um, but also I've seen you backstage as a dresser. Holy shit. Y'all, having <laughs> Jada, Phoenix motherfucking Lorez, as your dresser for a pageant means you are in good fucking hands. Yes. I'm also a menace to everyone involved. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, but honestly, that's kind of like what you need in pageantry, though. I think a lot of times it gets boiled down to what type of dresser you need. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of folks, like myself actually, are very comfortable having dressers that are more standoffish. Okay. Um, because like I, when I started doing drag, I took it very seriously. And so I needed to learn all of these bits mm -hmm. and pieces to kind of be a well-rounded queen. Um, and then from there, you can kind of pick and choose what you do and don't like. But I think the older that you get or the more seasoned that you get in a craft, you learn what you are or are not going to uphold. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, now, for example, we're all very clear here. I will wear the same goddamn ponytail for eight months and not care. <laughs> but I'm also very, I know I can do that, but you can't do that. <laughs> Um, it's very do like I say, not like I do. Right. So yes. there's a lot of moments where sometimes we're sitting and I'm thinking about things, especially during pageantry, where it's, yeah, I can do these things because I'm not trying to win my first pageant. Right. Or I'm not trying to impress a room of folks that don't already know me. Mm -hmm. um, versus it being significantly more rigid, especially the newer that you are coming into it. They expect you to fit the mold and the older you get the more opportunities you have to break the mold exactly work okay bitch i love that i i was trying to make it okay to be a fucking anarchy at this point <laughs> <laughs> listen might as well be right might as well be i you know when it comes to pageantry in general you have to have like this certain like discipline yeah. You know, so 
I know that being in gymnastics can give you that discipline, mm-hmm. but did that discipline come from anything else? God, yes. I am the child of a Southern Baptist pastor and an old black lady named Josie. Like, that <laughs> was not... It was like, in your version, destiny, bitch. The it was version in your of, of Josie that y'all get is a very different version of Josie that I got. <laughs> oh, I feel you on that one so oh, bad. Josie was in, so, like, to this day, there are two distinctive sounds that I can point mm-hmm. out, and it's my the footsteps of my grandfather and the footsteps of my mother. Oh, my goodness. My mother wore high... So, she used to work for DCSE, which is a giant military base in Whitehall. Okay. Um, she used to work there. So she would wear like the power suit, like the pants uh-huh. suit that had the high waist situation in the 90s. Oh, yes. But like the jacket and the pants were a monochromatic, like flat color with the black biscuit cutters. <laughs> like it might be four inches on a good day, but the heel about this big around. Right. So I know the sound of her footsteps on tile to this day. I graduated school in 2012. Oh, my God. To this day, I know what her footsteps sound like. And then my granddad used to work for the city of Columbus, so he always wore these steel-toed boots Uh and had this humongous ring of keys. It is the most terrifying sound that you've ever heard in your life because all the schools that I went to had tile floors. Oh, my God. So you could hear them regardless of where you were in the building. (laughs) So a, a portion of that <laughs> discipline that I've always dealt with when it came to pageantry also just involved the trauma from like <laughs> dealing with my family. <laughs> Once again, trauma. Trauma will do it to you. Listen, I <laughs> still stand by what uh, Miss Cracker said. I don't agree with bullying, but it works. But it works. <laughs> <laughs> It works. Bitch, it does. <laughs> Listen, being brown in general, if you're like your first bullies are your family. Yeah, like, it's like your family, the people you grew up in the same block with. Literally. Then the folks you go to school with. Literally. Then you're like uh, teachers, your co-worker. Like, it just progressively it just, gets it worse. It gets worse. <laughs> And then that's how you start building a thick skin. That's how you build friendship. That's how you build. You find your <laughs> yes. you find your tribe. Yes. The other abused people in the corner exactly. trying to avoid your boss. All neurodivergent, like minded individuals just always gravitate towards each we other. Find each other. Yeah, and that's why you call it drag. Queen. Okay. I know we spoke about pageantry. Mm-hmm. We spoke about how drag became into your life or mm-hmm. came into your life. Um, now I want to ask you. I don't know if it would be an easy song or sorry, easy question for you. Um, but what is your favorite song to dance to, not perform to or anything like that, but to just, you are in the moment, just <laughs> dancing, living your life, enjoying it. Cause when you hear, it, you're just fucking like, I feel it in my body, in my bones. So I'm not that girl. <gasps> <laughs> I'm not that girl. You don't dance. I'm not. Um, I'm so here's the thing for me. Okay. Um, I created Jada to be everything that Jay can't be. Aww. So Jada really is like the pinnacle of everything that I really wish I could be on a regular, or I would feel comfortable being mm-hmm. on a regular basis. Um, outside of drag, I'm such a, ho- like, I don't leave my house. Okay. okay. I stay at home and watch Netflix. I can drink at home. Um, I kick it at my house. Every now and again, Cherry Poppins shows up to my house because I haven't answered her phone in a few days, weeks, or whatever. So she just shows up to my front door. Like, I'm such a homebody outside of dress. You're a recluse, dress. bitch. Oh, I'm a fucking hermit. <laughs> like, I will be in my house in peace and have no idea what's happening outside of them four walls. I feel you, though. I feel you. That's so it's good. so weird to me being asked questions like that where they're like, oh, what's like... What's your one jam song or the one place you want to go? Bitch, my bed. That's where I want to go. Okay. I don't have a jam. Like, the only... When I think about dancing the songs, I'm like, what is the one song that I would be like, bitch, if I have to twirl? What is the song I have to twirl I mean, even to? if you're in, like, in your own room, or, like, even in, in your own, like, space when nobody's I can watching. I listen to it wrapped up like a burrito. Okay. I'm that girl. Okay, but what about a song that just, like, makes you get up and move? It doesn't, it like... It don't. Ain't one. Ain't not nail one on the face of the plate. You know what? That's a lie. Okay. Because I'm still extra black. Okay. So uh-huh. there is a song. Oh, I don't even remember who it's by. 
But it starts out with um, uh, one time for the 99 and the 2000s. And it's called uh, Back That Ass Up. <laughs> Back that ass up. Up, you a hey, big boy, yeah, mama? Won't you back, back that, that ass, ass up? up. Hey, That's as close that, as we get. Back that ass. Okay. Because I could hear that in the middle of the mall and forget where I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then remember, there's children around. There's fucking granny trying to like... shop for white diamonds and shit. The <laughs> perfume, not the stone. Um, <laughs> there, uh, I will forget where the fuck I am. I will have a leg up on something. And you're just <laughs> knowing I ain't got no ass. But I'll be having a leg up on something. I mean, you could twerk the bone. It moves. <laughs> it moves. Bitch, I am surprised. Yeah, if I'm going to pick a song, it will be back that ass up. I am surprised. Because the moment it's the one time for the 9 9 and the 2000s, you're like, ah! Every person that looks like me is stopping what they're doing. <laughs> twerk Fest is officially in session. I love a good Twerk Fest, y'all. Like, okay. So I am. What about surprised. you? What's yours? Me? Okay, I have way too many because I love music. <laughs> okay, okay, top three. Top three. Oh my gosh. I would have to say. Um, I feel love. I feel love. By um. Das. Okay. Yeah, I feel mm-hmm. love. By Donna Summer, right? Oh, I um, fucking know, bitch. I just know the song. <laughs> yeah, it's I feel love. Um, that is one that definitely like it always makes me just. Mm-hmm. move um also i would have to say uh bitty bitty bum bum by selena no i'm gonna keep that one in here until later keep going <laughs> okay <laughs> and then my third one oh my goodness i have so many Uh, Where the fuck did that sound <laughs> just come from? My throat, bitch. It's talented. That's like an extra airway. That's talented. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a talented just start throat. Start talent. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Maybe I would win. Ooh. <laughs> um, my third one, honestly, just anything that's Latin. Anything Latin that has that, like, drums and, like, trumpets. And I'm okay. like, ooh, I'm like, ooh, let's... Let's do it. You feel it down, down in here somewhere. Everywhere. Just, you be like, I'm like, literally when I'm working, I'm like, uh, 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 uh. You know? You be in the like, corner feeling your face. Yes, it. bitch. Every time. I There's times where he comes down and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm just listening to okay, music. Okay, but no tea, though. Sometimes I'll just put my Spotify on shuffle and then there's videos of it. I don't know who got them. But there's videos of just me driving but also trying to like twirl in my head to numbers that I do on a regular basis. Like, <laughs> bitch, I'll be in there like. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and they're like, what is going on with you? And I was like, what? I'm performing. <laughs> in my head, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> I'm you're just driving. so ingrained in your brain. Yeah, I'm like, I'm just driving. What are you talking about? And they're right. like, bitch, you're over here giving a whole one-two step to somebody. Literally. <laughs> to somebody. Hey. We don't know who. Just somebody. We are performers. <laughs> That's what we do. I do that shit all the time, especially when I'm driving. I'm like, you know, like. Oh, bitch, I'll be at work. At just anywhere. Like today, fucking uh, Her by Megan Thee Stallion came uh-huh. on. She. She didn't even realize she, my boss was standing behind her, me. Her, her. Bitch, I'm just, bitch, I'm her. Her, 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 she, 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 she goes, what was that? Yeah. I was like, bitch, mind your business. Is my job getting done? <laughs> That's the question you should be asking. Okay, first my of job's all. getting done. You can pull them numbers, ma'am. What it, is, mind your business. <laughs> it doesn't matter how, how I, I do get it. through my work day. That's between it, me and God. Exactly. You just know the job's getting done. <laughs> between me and my Run Spotify my playlist, check. bitch. <laughs> I can't. Okay, see, that's me. T. T all the way down. <laughs> Ooh. And cheers to that one, bitch. Because I love a good mm, love a good twerk sesh during work. 
So, Jada, mm -hmm. this past Monday was the eighth episode of The Drag Master. And we so happen to have a wedding. I heard the host is getting married. Ah, listen. Separately. But I have questions. Okay. <laughs> We're going to get to that. We're going to get to all the tea, all the questions. Because this past Monday, we had the wedding roast mm -hmm. in which the students were paired off to each other, which we only have five students left. So one was the master ceremony. So who ceremony. sent themselves home? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> who decided to be like Miss Thing and pour the lipstick out their own titty and be like, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> or was this just an oversight in casting? <laughs> Okay, so what do you mean? Was well, an over? I said exactly what the fuck I said. Was well, the oversight and casting, uh -huh. or who sent themselves home? Well, there were a few people that sent themselves home this season. So the first one that um, decided to drop out was Catherine Grace. That was, I believe, during. Week oh, yeah, she three. had a lot of shit going on right. at once. Yes. Okay, I remember and that. And then mm -hmm. um, people were eliminated, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, as they should have been, right? And then. Um, we were going to bring someone back. And this then, is when y'all was going to bring back Arita ass? Yeah, Arita came back. Okay. And then... Y'all um, promptly she, sent her backpacking. No, she went back. She decided that she had some personal issues to deal with. Oh, I know you fucking lied. So then, at that point, since Arita said, you nope, know... No, we not finna hop, skip, and jump past <laughs> this hole. Wait a fucking minute. Now, I'm all for bitches taking care of their mental health and shit. However, you mean to tell me this bitch got the Tatiana role mm -hmm. and then sent herself Bender La Creme Express Mail back to her <laughs> chateau? She did, but at least we gave Godiva the chance to be back in her place, in Arita's place. Because it was Arita and Godiva that were going against each other. And then Godiva went home. Arita stayed, right? Mm -hmm. So then Arita was like, I can't do this. So then y'all brought back Godiva we brought, we brought her back during the Horror Week But then y'all sent her packing. Because she, you, I mean, you know, she did what she did during the challenge. I wasn't there. So no, I don't know what uh, she did, what she did. What the hell she do? So she did, like, her, most of her number was um, a, like, video, like... Like movie, like a show. Was the film. Mario hands thing? No, that was before that. So this was okay. the horror week. So her concept was that she got. Oh, that's when she had a titty sitting in the middle of her chest. Yes, I believe so. Okay, I want. Is this my camera? Uh huh. That I want to be very clear. With all you hoes wearing breastplates, <laughs> if you gonna wear a goddamn breastplate, I need. I need you motherfuckers to make sure. That it's not sitting in the dead square center of your chest. I don't give a fuck who this apply to. That's your business. If your titties don't stretch from armpit to armpit, it's too small. Get a bigger one. That's all All y'all watching this. If your titty meat don't go from here to over here. I don't give a damn your cup size. I don't give a damn about none of that. If y'all sitting out here looking like Boa... During Canada's Drag Race. Shut the fuck up. Because you, right. you know they were square right. in the middle of the chest. <laughs> you know you they were square in the middle of the chest. It is the most irritating thing I have ever... And maybe because I come from pageantry, it is the most irritating thing I have ever actually had to witness live. It's holes having fucking breastplates that sit in the square middle of the chest. I would much rather be top heavy Mm -hmm. And my titties be halfway in my back than I would them sitting over here looking like I'm just swollen in the sternum. <laughs> or at least have one of those that like literally go completely around your armpit. These be the ones that be the fucking turtle yes! that the holes be wearing That's and why they I'm still like, uh -huh. be in the middle of their chest. Get the ones that go like all the way up to and here I, at least. And don't get me wrong. I love Godiva. She's my granddaughter. I love her dearly. Where she got her titty choices beyond me. But I make the same fucking comment about y'all's fucking homegirl hotel. <laughs> okay, I feel you. Bitch, as small framed as I am. <laughs> bitch, when I went and bought a breastplate, that hole was a triple D. Because it was the only way I was going to get it from here to here. 
Now, was they massive? Absolutely. But I also feel like I'm supposed to be giving titty illusion. Yeah. I'm going to pick the titties that is as big as humanly possible. Exactly. That's still going to fit right here. Were mine <laughs> obnoxious? Absolutely. That's why I got these now. Yes, they were obnoxious. <laughs> I was aware. <laughs> but if I'm going to spend hundreds. At least make it. See, hundreds <laughs> of dollars on silicone titties. <sighs> I would much rather them be massive and obnoxious Bitch. than look like I was out here trying to put my titties on layaway. Mm-hmm. Cheers to that bitch. Because, listen, I, I, okay, so I've been noticing, <laughs> so I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> it is the most irritating portion of watching girls with breastplates. And, oh. Because I don't watch <laughs> rich holes with breastplates, broke holes with breastplates, working girls with breastplates. I'm confused by the narrative. <laughs> The the what I what I hate seeing the most when it comes to like breastplates is like if they're like ripped or something or cut it out. Or right. Or cut it out or if like they try piece. to cut it out and it's jagged. Like <laughs> like ah. the Velcro started giving out on my Yes. And it's like so peeling back. It is like giving you like that like um pork skin look. <laughs> when I tell you I have glued I think 12 rhinestones, singular ones, not 12 projects, 12 individual rhinestones onto something before I gave the fuck up and was like, this is not for me. Uh huh. I understood when the Velcro start coming out. <laughs> There's a crafty bitch somewhere that's going to fix it. Mm-hmm. That crafty bitch is not me. <laughs> I sold that bitch post haste. That is, listen. Absolutely the fuck not, you trick ass bitch. Don't. Y'all not finna have me out here in Beyonce public. Because if you. Looking insane. <laughs> I do enough of that on my own. Exactly. I don't need the whole look to do that for me. I don't need help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need help. Bitch, okay. So, with all of that, we. <laughs> We just had a great time this past Monday, okay? And it was the wedding roast, and they were Oh, it's time for the notes! Yes! Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. (laughs) So, um, the students had to roast each other. They were in pairs. We had Anonymous as the master of ceremonies, and then we had um, Jack and Madam Woods Mm -hmm. together. Um, as the first couple to get married and mm-hmm. they exchanged their vows as Rose. And then we had Rulin and Cinder. Mm-hmm. So, and the dress code was wedding gone wrong. So it was however their wedding went wrong, whether it was like their dress went missing or the food never showed up or the band was the wrong I band I mean, nobody did the food never showed up. See, that would have been good. Because I fully expect to see a bitch in a robe, a bonnet, and just angry. Having like to cook one everything. eyelash, having the, the auntie shoe with yes. the little ribbon on the yes. toe. Yes, they got I the have little mat. Yeah. You know what I'm talking I, about? Oh, I know exactly, bitch. I'm a I Mia. fully I'm expected a that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, it's gonna be some tea because I know you got a lot of uh, oh, a bitch, lot I of took notes. Extensive notes. Okay. I had to rewatch it to make sure that all my notes made sense. And I'm sure they do. I'm not, but we gonna do it anyway. <laughs> you ready? Oh, I've been oh, ready. Oh, bitch. Are you ready to spill? Absolutely. Okay. So, who were some of your favorites of the evening? My favorites, you, for the audacity. Ah! Because the first thing that caught me off guard watching this whole motherfucking shit. Uh-huh. We was out here blind leading the blind, and I should have known it was bad then. Where was your nails at? Listen. Uh-uh, because you ain't have on glove the first. <laughs> Not okay. gloved nail, not the biker glove. It was the first thing I fucking know. You came out in that yellow dress. At least I think it was yellow. Uh-huh. With the ruffles on the side. Uh-huh. Bitch, you came out in that yellow dress. And I said, where that lady nails at? Okay, <laughs> so, Jada, would I tell you? 
I stood back there. I was like shaking, putting on nails, right? And I was like, I have to fucking have nails. I, and they were like, we're ready. I'm like, I have to have fucking nails. My, I had three glues in my bag. They were all out. I asked somebody for someone else's glue and ran out after one nail. I asked somebody else, their glue was dry. I was like, you know what? You're just I was like, <laughs> I'm over it. You're so I was like, just you know struggling. what? Nobody gonna notice. And I was like, yeah, they oh, are. No, bitch, I was I like, yeah, they are. In my head, no, I told myself, I'm like, they're not gonna notice. But my my inner saboteur was like, yes, Somebody the fuck they notice. are, bitch. Bitch, so you the whole out. entire night, I be, I was so uncomfortable because I did not have fucking nails on. Okay, and hotel even told me it was the first <laughs> thing I noticed. You walked, they said, make some noise for Heliana Perez. You came out, did your number. I didn't notice during your number. Because you were slick and you kept trying to move around and shit so I wouldn't see it. So I was like, all right, work, Miss Thing, yes. And then you stopped moving. And I was like, did she lose her nails during the number? <laughs> How we get here? Because I, I, I got on my power dyke nails right now. But still, I was like, bitch, I'm in the audience and nailed. <laughs> I mean, I was nailed, but not... That got me together. <laughs> and while we're on the topic of gender bending... Uh-huh. I'm still not right with Hotel being there as a boy in a neck brace. <laughs> head to toe matching. Literally. He had the white neck brace with uh-huh. the white Air Forces. <laughs> and in the blue jean and the jacket and the white tee. <laughs> Bitch, I was living for it because when AJ told me the hotel was gonna perform, I was like, "How is this bitch gonna?" You perform? were like, "How?" This I was like, an "Accident? How is she finna do shit?" You know, like over here, like stiff as fuck. You know, just I was like, "Okay, how you gonna do that hotel?" But AJ then down. the bitch showed up. This bitch is this whole '90s number. And then I was like, "Wait a minute. So is the bitch not that performing then? Because she's not painted." I was like, "Wait." And when then she I, started unpacking. I'm like, "Wait, you're performing." As a whole man. Okay, bitch. I was like, it Word. was given Michael Keaton when he had to play the Batman and Batman and Robin <laughs> with the cow. Yes. And the... stiff ass. Oh, bitch! What I <laughs> lived. I was like, th- that's dedication. Okay, see, <laughs> I, I, because when we found out that Hotel got into the car accident, mm. we told her. I was like, listen, you do not have to perform, but we will still go ahead and pay you. We're still going to pay you. Don't worry about it. And the restaurant was like, no. I was like. Bitch, that is a workhorse at her best. First of all. She said, first and foremost, you ain't never going to have a reason to try to take my goddamn money from me, bitch. I'm going to be there. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be there. I'm going to be on time. And I'm going to do my job. Exactly. <laughs> I love a bitch like that. And but we told her I was like, if you're gonna perform, please do not go all crazy. Like we know you like to get in the moment and just like go all out, but don't do that. So when the bitch showed up out of dragon, I was like, you're like cool, she's taking a night off. Right? Bitch, you thought? I thought. <laughs> I, I really was bamboozled, bitch. Got you together. <laughs> bitch, you thought? I sure did. <laughs> just how I thought I was gonna wear nails that night, but I sure the fuck did not. Sure didn't. <laughs> And they all decided to put my ass on the front row. Oh. <laughs> and my, my coat was long enough, so I was trying to hide it. And I was telling everyone, like, Mm-mm. I feel so fucking you naked. You was fully giving skater girl, because it was literally just the tips of your fingers. <laughs> and then, like, coat jacket. Like, you really thought you were slick. <laughs> like, you thought we was in the library in 02. <laughs> Bitch, with just the, the tips out so you could type. <laughs> <laughs> when the sweater used to come down the hill yes, but you bitch. thought you was slick I was living <laughs> it okay I was struggling backstage cause trust me I was trying I was like uh uh-uh, uh I can do this I can do this and I kept telling myself like you can do this bitch you got this you got this and it wasn't working it wasn't working bitch would've got me though what I would've gagged for is if you would've had like talons but only on certain nails <laughs> like you like... only had thumbs <laughs> and pinkies <laughs> Imagine. Like thumbs, pinkies, and ring fingers, but you ain't have enough time to get the other four. <laughs> and it was shut high. That see, I I would be like throwing up gang see, size and shit. Iconic, bitch. <laughs> so you gotta uh, learn how to how to accept the moment when it comes, bitch. See, you're right. You're that right. would have been iconic. They've been like, yeah, bitch, I got on nails to talk about. And to use the other ones to cover up the nails you ain't got on. <laughs> <laughs> Out here crisscrossing with the nail. Just the uh, Ma'am, see, I can't. I cannot. 
Uh, okay, so after my no nail having ass mm-hmm. performed. In the iconic jean outfit. In the iconic jean <laughs> outfit, too. <laughs> who were some of your standouts? Uh, tell me, Mama, who were some of your standouts? Okay, so during the challenge. Uh huh. I've known Anonymous for quite some time. Okay. I was not prepared uh-huh. for what they presented during the challenge. Like, I like what they wore. Uh-huh. I like what they were given. It, it got me together, which I felt like, I don't know what strategic piece they had. Because, you know, Drag Race like to throw a little root in mm-hmm. them. I didn't know what strategic piece they may or may not have had, but if they did, it worked to their advantage. Oh, yeah. Because it was fully like, okay, well, I'm going to take this this uh, role and run with it and leave these holes in the dust. So even if I don't do immaculate and anything else, mm-hmm. y'all are going to make yourselves look bad. <laughs> Which, spoiler alert, happens um <laughs> but yeah y'all gonna make yourselves look bad so regardless of what was gonna happen that night anonymous was still gonna look good true because she really did not have anyone to be compared to right it was like there was no person in the scenes with you it yeah. was literally just you keeping the flow of the show going mm-hmm. which really wasn't hard with how the other scenes played out it wasn't difficult to do but also with them being so immaculate at doing it mm-hmm. and doing it in duress, <laughs> they should have started packing the moment it started. <laughs> at this point. <laughs> but that's just me, and I just so happen to be a spectator. Okay, <laughs> okay. Any other standouts other than Anonymous? Well, see, I gotta go piece by piece because I got notes. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. bitch, I took. <clears throat> bitch, I took notes, Oh, mama. bitch. Okay. Because, you know, I, every now and again, I like to enjoy a cocktail or right, several. Right, right, right. So I had to make sure that all my notes was going to be right. <laughs> so they wouldn't be trying to challenge me like they did last year. They weren't going to try <laughs> to challenge me on the podcast. So I had to make sure that all my shit was in order. So I had to go piece by piece. <laughs> so I had to start with the little intro with the you and no nails and this thing in the jeans. <laughs> and then go to the first officiant situation. Which, first of all, let's discuss this. Okay. Which I feel like has been discussed several times. Miss mm-hmm. Thing said, well, this is the best season that we've had of the Drag Master. And I think that's very dependent on where you look. Okay. Okay. Because... Do I think that this season had the best fashions of Dragmaster? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. As for the best season, though, I have had toe fungus more exciting than some of these lip syncs. <gasps> okay, T, I feel you. That's that is true, T. And part of me is trying to figure out where to place my thumb on it. I need to smell desperation mm-hmm. when I'm watching this lip sync. Like, I need you to reach reach far back in your closet as humanly possible and pull out tricks that you know you can't do. I know you can't do, but I'm going to enjoy you watching to attempt to do. Like, I need the... Like, the hunger. The, yeah, like, the it, wasn't, it wasn't giving me the, the mm-hmm. I want to be here. It was giving me the, if I can do X, Y, and Z, y'all gonna keep me. Mm-hmm. And so it was, it was, it wasn't given. The lip syncs this, this go round, and I've been there for a, at least five mm-hmm. of them. It wasn't given the way the previous seasons was given. Now the fashions, on the other hand, the way these holes have set up here and dog walk these fucking runways... Now, that's a different story, bitch. For, like, honestly, though. And, uh, I mean, there's multiple reasons. There's multiple reasons. Because, one, the fashion, fucking amazing. Okay? The fashion has been sick this, this season. Sickening, sickening, sickening. Um, two, I would have to say that the... Uh, 
the passion that has been shown by the contestants mm-hmm. has been different than the passion that has been shown by previous contestants, right? Mm-hmm. And especially for this season. And also, um, it's very, like, there isn't a lot of shade amongst each other. Yes, there is. Well, that Girl. I have known of, uh, there isn't a lot. Yes, there is. Here's the issue. Okay, because I Because you're know. not I'm a shady know. queen for the most part. For the, the most part is mm. what I see it. Mm. Noticing you it know when it's, <laughs> you're some dumb, not plum dumb. Um, <laughs> noticing it sometimes is a little different. These, what, what, I, what I saw, I'm not going to be that girl. What I saw was y'all saw us reading this past season so bad for their lack of fashions. Y'all hyper-focused on the fashions this year and forgot that it's a multifaceted competition. Mm -hmm. I need you to provide during the challenges. I need Mm -hmm. you to still give during a dress code. I still need all these other bits and pieces. And bitch, if you get in this bottom two hole, or in this case, bottom Mm -hmm. whatever number it is, I don't know how y'all edit this show. Y'all ain't finna do me. (laughs) Um, but you know what I'm saying? If you end up in the bottom, bitch, I need you to get like at okay. every step of this, I need you to give. And I think because last season was so good about having girls that were really good or girls, he, she's, and they's that were so good during the challenges mm-hmm. and that were so good during the lip syncs that they were like, well, girl, they didn't really give for, for roll call. They didn't really give for dress code or they didn't get... So then they hyper focused on that, mm-hmm. trying to be niche, and be like, okay, well, you know, we're gonna have girls that are good for roll call, we're gonna have girls that are good for the challenge, but if I can corner the market, being good for dress code, then I'll skate. Mm-hmm. Not realizing that bitch, you wasn't the only hoe with that original idea. So now all you hoes trying to skate, yeah, for for uh, fucking dress code, and now it's just a bunch of girls with great looks, or at least great concepts for looks that either aren't executed in the fashion of which that would really save you from being in the bottom two and would allow you to kind of coast, or you did them thinking that that was going to save you, even though you were terrible in every other aspect of the competition that night. So, girl, it, 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 it's been interesting watching <laughs> the last few years of this by comparison. And it feels like Folks have forgotten that it's a multifaceted competition. Right. So, <clears throat> I will say that the lip syncs, yes, completely. Well, not completely. I would say mostly completely. Because there were a couple people that did better than others. While it was not what we have experienced in the past, it was still to say that it was not 100%. We still like okay. watching a bitch get murdered during the lip sync. I mean, Let's of course, <laughs> right? But, but so that I completely, I, I completely get because season two was great for fucking. It lip-sync. was like the season of lip sync assassins. It, it, I mean, especially like, it hotel, was the season because hotel was assassins. mostly at the bottom. No tea, bitch. But like hotel and was in that whole and, one. And exactly. <laughs> so it's like that's what made it great. Because she is sickening, right? So with this season, for some reason, we, I think what, kind of how, what what you were saying, that they were just so hyper-focused on the dress code Mm -hmm. that they kind of forgot to really, like, focus on other areas of the competition. Mm -hmm. I will say that there have been a lot of moments throughout the competition this season during the class assignments that we had some knockout performances from individuals. So it's like either the the assignment or the dress code is really, really Mm -hmm. good. But then when it comes to the lip sync, it's like, there's always something missing. Yes, there's something missing. It was like, what was it that, um, I don't remember, I think it was Lada that posted on Facebook that said it was like the epidemic of whisper lip sync or whatever. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> like, so it's like, I get that. You know, I completely understand that. It's like, okay. So I know that there's definitely some aspects of this season that are much better than last season, mm-hmm. but vice versa, mm-hmm. right? Um, and we just think that when it comes to this top five, 
we think that it's the best season overall because this top five has been some of the most determined, some of the most like just straight on ready for it, ready for the kill. And that have shown a lot of growth, you know, especially throughout this it. This top five is also probably one of the most diverse top yes. fives yes. that I think y'all have had in quite some mm-hmm. time. Like, each individual person that's there brings, I like to call them the pillars, but like brings yeah. a different pillar of drag mm-hmm. to this particular competition. Because you have some girls that are just genuinely gorgeous. Yes. Like, without even effort. Mm-hmm. You have folks that are wildly creative. You have these performers. You have girls that are just funny because they open their eyes. Like, you have these different pillars of drag that yeah. are all present, and they're all there independently. Yep. Yep. No, I know this is your what you've been waiting for the most. Bitch. <laughs> yes, I did. So now we're about to talk about the not so standouts okay. for you. So before I get started, more like sit-ins. <laughs> get out! <laughs> it's my house, bitch. I still said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Who were some that were not so stand out to you? Okay, so here was my issue when it okay. came to it. Come on. Is that I don't know if there was some sort of um, grace that was given or if they got to pick and choose or whatever. But if there was some sort of advantage given to the dolls, Anonymous played the fucking game. Okay, so <laughs> since Anonymous won the the week prior, the okay. challenge, um, they had the privilege to set out the lineup and decide who was going to marry who Bitch, and Ms. who was the MC. Miss Mamas played the game. Because <laughs> the way she set up here and tap dance on all that sort of hoes nerve, that was so greatly purposeful. Um, because it's not that any individual person did bad. Like, no one did mm-hmm. poorly. But it was just the mesh of the folks being in the groups that they were in did not mesh well together. <laughs> and then her, or, and then Anonymous being by themselves. Oh, chef's kiss. Mm. Because then you have nothing, one, you have nothing to really compare Anonymous mm-hmm. to. Versus the four others that are in groups. Now we have to either compare you to each other. Right. Or compare the two groups against each other. And frankly, neither of you had very good chemistry. Okay. It was wild to watch. Especially not necessarily knowing that there was an actual advantage. And me just thinking this was just happenstance. (laughs) But I was like, oh, baby. Somebody got over and got over good, bitch. <laughs> they got got, bitch. Because, like, realistically speaking, okay, wait. Uh huh. So, first of all, her coming out being the efficient and referencing um, Cinder's mascot look and saying, bitch, take care of that, we will pay the bill, left me weak, and she and they kept coming back to it. Consistency. Got me together. <laughs> Got me together. <laughs> the way that they decided to dog walk everyone present. Loved it. Mm. However. There was a portion in which this bitch is wearing Crocs or Uggs or whatever the fuck the case may be. I'm not a flats kind of girl. I'm not a fan. But everything else. You know what? Take it. We've heard quite a bit. Take it. We've heard quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Between that and then the um, (laughs) the make a wish comment (laughs) about Cinder got me together. (laughs) And also, full disclosure, no, I do not think that all white people look the same. However, I fully thought that Rulin and um, Nasty were the same person. Because the folks kept telling me that, don't laugh at me. 
<laughs> so I thought, so the folks kept telling me that Rue Lynn did both ends of the gender spectrum. Okay. So when I saw Nasty doing the Prince song uh, a couple weeks ago, I thought that was just Rue Lynn doing Rue Lynn thing as a boy queen. Okay. No one warned me that they are two completely different people. Yes, very much different. Which, by the way, Nasty will be performing at the finale. I'll be so. back, and apparently I owe y'all hoes money. But it yes. is what it is. You heard it here now. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I fully thought that we were the same person. Okay, but to be fair, I thought that Britt Fabian and Mary Nolan were the same person for years. And I mean literal years. Bitch, same. Oh! Same. Oh! <laughs> so you want to give me all white people don't look the same. But bitch, you thought, just like I thought, Mary Nolan and Brooke Fabian were the same bitch. <laughs> it's their mouth shape, right? No, it's the way they act. <laughs> bitch, no, they facially, I met like. I Fabian first. And then I <sighs> walked up to Mary Nolan while she was sitting at the bar as a boy with audacity, bitch. Because I had been waving at this bitch for like five minutes. You know, I don't have the patience that mm-hmm. God gave a gnat. Mm. So I was like, why is this bitch ignoring me? So I pounced over to the bar. And then I heard her voice, and I was like, y'all are not the same person. <laughs> <laughs> and immediately beelined outside. When I first moved here to Columbus, there was somebody, um, I was a Bosco, and so somebody thought I was Mary Nolan. How? Because I was short. Because yeah. you were short and light. Mm. They thought that you were Mary Nolan. Mm-hmm. That's my mammy, and that's still a crime against humanity. You should sue them. I should. They probably got money somewhere. Or their mama got money. So, so back to who were your not-so-standouts. Oh, the rest of the group at this point. Okay, so how come? So, Anonymous did me really good because they kept the the flow of things going, Uh right? Which I rocked with. And then they had these funny moments. But the one thing I will never ever be a fan of it gives me the same energy when you tell your friend that you can copy my homework but change the words and they just don't okay on more than one occasion i witnessed some of these doors pull jokes either straight from drag race or straight from vh1 and the only thing you change is the person we're talking about like okay. when, um, wait, I wrote it down. Um, there was one when I know When Madam mm-hmm. said about Jack, I know what you got on your ACTs, yep. ketchup. Yep. Irritated me. Yep. Season Immediately six. Immediately irritated Bianca me. Bianca the real and for fucking Dor Delano. Thing. Oh, irritated my whole life. Mm-hmm. And then um, when Rue Lynn and Cinder were doing their set, and one of them referenced, I don't remember which one it was, but I was like, oh my God, doesn't she look like an angel that presides over the pits of hell? Tiffany Pollard said that about Boots. Not Boots, excuse me. Said that about the white girl who was the only one left at the time. Season two, Flavor of Love. Oh, 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 Pumpkin. Nope. No, that was season Pumpkin one. Pumpkin was season one. Um, Season two was... Bucky. Bucky, it was Bucky. Or no, not Bucky. No. Buck Wild. <laughs> Buck no, Bucky Wild and Buck is the Wild. white girl. Wait, there Bucky are... <gasps> is the black girl that ended up on Love yeah. and Hip Hop. Okay, Goldie was my favorite, though. Bitch, when she said, oh, doesn't she look like an angel? Oh, yeah. That presides over the pits of hell. I hate a bit, and being a bitch who is not inherently funny, mm. like, I get humor is not inherently my thing. I'm just mean, and people think that it's funny. <laughs> um, I can get having to pull from a source, but at least change, change it, it up. Yeah, elevate it. You know, at that point, we know where it's coming from. If you found it online, so did a it million other people. Is. Yes. But like having so many moments where it was, where they were just jokes ripped from other TV shows, especially well-known TV shows. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that was part of the, for a lot of the younger folks that watched, for example, Jinx Monsoon during her Snatch Game. The majority of us have never watched this fucking show that little Edie is from. Yep, Great Garden. So her pulling these jokes from that, none of us knew. Mm-hmm. You can't pull shit from Drag Race. Yeah. And just say it verbatim about a mm-hmm. new bitch. Yeah. 
Like, because we all watched it. We were all there. Exactly, (laughs) exactly. It it was a a little... I did notice a couple copycat jokes, but... Yes. It wasn't my favorite. Okay. Also, as beautiful as I think this... As beautiful as I think this young lady is... Now we're serious. I have never been more offended watching Jack in this five-inch stiletto on one foot in a flat. Just for you to come back out right before we do crowning in two mismatch flats. <laughs> it was the most irritating portion because I already was mentally struggling to be like, okay, cool. You, you, you fucked up your ankle one way or another. You did what you did. Cool. And you trying to make it work? I appreciate the hustle, bitch. Just for my whole world to be blown at the end when we were in two different mismatch flats. I mean, why they got a badge? <laughs> we are in your house and I'm a car now. <laughs> Try me, ho. <laughs> but it was full of, and like being a bitch who has broken a bone or five in or my five. lifetime I've never broken a bone but I'm like bitch oh. I fully did this and I think that's why I'm so adamant about it is being like I've broken my ankle and fully just wore full length gowns my fucking boots <laughs> like ma'am your ankle is wrapped up I had a boot up my shin <laughs> and a rhinestone tennis shoe and called it a day so it was wild to me to watch her in these like stunning outfits with these immaculate shoes. Mm-hmm. Well, shoe. And in a flat. <laughs> either lean like it was fully one of those where you should lean into one or the other. Right. Like lean into just being like, my shit is fucked up and I'm finna walk like a newborn giraffe <laughs> for the rest of the night, because I'm wearing these stilettos. Or, bitch, I'm wearing flats and you hoes gonna deal. Like, I'm gonna lean, and they're gonna be the ugliest flats. Like, lean into it one way or the other, especially because it's a reading challenge. Just like when they was gaslighting Candy Muse on fucking, uh, oh my god, what is that? When they was gaslighting her on the, on the pit stop. Mm-hmm. When she finally showed up and Bianca had finally started wearing real shoes again. Yeah, And she goes, where's your little black shoes? <laughs> And Bianca fully is leaning yeah. in the gaslighting the shit I was like, out of her. I don't know what like, you're talking about. Shoes. I've been wearing heels this whole time. What the mm-hmm. fuck is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Like, one or the other. <laughs> one or the other. One or the other. But watching her go through that, like, it was disheartening because she's so fucking beautiful. Mm-hmm. That I was just like, there were so gorgeous, many honestly. other ways to handle the. Ooh. Don't you shake your goddamn neck at me. <laughs> he said, bitch, don't try me. You're cute or whatever, but don't, don't, don't try it. He's like, I'm the OG here. I've heard. <laughs> I heard that's a natural thug missus. Let me leave him the fuck alone for him <laughs> being fucked up out here. There are people that were not so standouts. So you mentioned Jack and the boo. Mm-hmm. Jack and the boo. You um, mentioned Anonymous and the flats. Mm-hmm. Okay. What was, what was another thing? What were So it? the only thing I could really give Madam during the challenge itself Mm -hmm. was the rip of the drag race jokes right cool whatever there was a bitch on the other team that did the same thing but also and only because i'm weird about the aesthetic itself i wish her hair was bigger for for the challenge because you have this very tight to your body dress what, what was what was what hair was she wearing she wore this like um, f- not even finger wave. I can't even call- this like Marcel wave wig. Oh, like the copper red one. The, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah, all yeah. tight to the head. Yeah. And the one thing that I always tell girls, which mm-hmm. you have to think about your proportions above your chin as well, because a lot of girls get wrapped up in the proportions from here down. Mm-hmm. What if are my like boobs big chin? enough? If that's your business. Oh. As long as you contour them right. I mean, that business ain't booming, though. That's your business. <laughs> 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 Bitch, we 
going bankrupt. But it's, it's very like if your proportions are right, there's a whole lot you can get away with. Yep. I, and so I I'm agree. like, what I, I think agree. a lot of girls don't always think about is their proportions above their chin. Yeah. Bitch, are your earrings big enough? Are mm-hmm. your is your hair big enough? It like there's a bunch of other shit that happens below your above your Adam's apple that you're not thinking about. So. I think that what there are some people that don't understand about proportion, blah, 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 about proportion, or proportionizing as RuPaul Absolutely has. Fuck <laughs> That's fucking coined. Or about being proportionate with things mm-hmm. is that there's a visual benefit to it. Mm-hmm. Um, when a person is looking at something, mm-hmm. the eye has to go in a certain direction when you're looking at it, right? So if you have a proportionate object, it's more aesthetically pleasing Absolutely. to the eye. So a lot of, I've seen or I've heard some individuals kind of, you know, um, a rebuttal <laughs> or, or combat proportioning being proportionate with um it's like gender roles and so on and blah 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 right and i i do understand that to to a certain degree however i think when it comes to our our just looking at a focal point in um in an object Mm -hmm. um it's just more static aesthetically pleasing even outside of it being aesthetically pleasing there is still a portion where regardless of whether or not you do or don't agree Mm -hmm. With the fundamentals of what drag is as a whole, there is still a respect that is to be paid to it. Right. So I'm like, even though I can understand, for example, um, Jack not being, or at least to my knowledge, being a girl that wears body padding. Right. That's cool for her because she is small enough Mm -hmm. to be able to do that. My shoulder is big as your back window. There's not a whole lot of situations I can get away with not wearing body padding. Mm -hmm. And that's just a realistic factor. Like, right now I'm sitting here in a fucking snatched bun that I'm probably holding on with four four fucking bobby pins. (laughs) And calling it a day. A bitch, this earring is facing the camera? Big as hell. (laughs) (laughs) Bitch, and in any other situation, those are the kind of things you have to think about. Even... I'm sitting down and still fully padded, tucked, tights, mm-hmm. shoes that I didn't even realize the folks wasn't finna see. <laughs> Show but, it, bitch. but bitch, I put on my hood rat, my hey. freak Nick shoes. I want some <laughs> shoes like that. No, but you don't. They're a pain in the ass. Are they? Girl, okay, so I have to like, you gotta loosen them up from here. Oh, see. All the way up and then zip them, then Mm-mm. lace them. Mm-mm. Then do, it's a, I've owned these shoes for five see, years. I've worn them three times. I'm short, so these will probably go up to my thigh. Bitch, they're gonna be hitting up in your hip. <laughs> like up here, bitch. That'd be kind of They might as well be part of your corset at that point. Right. That'd be kind of I mean, that would be uh, cut. You know, like kind of garter boots. That would boots. be cut. Okay. But I'm like, there is a portion of, 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 being proportionate that is not only just aesthetically pleasing to the eye, but just generally necessary. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. And so I'm like, like, for example, I hate my nails. I have mm-hmm. big hands. I can palm a basketball. <laughs> my nails should be this long, just to be proportionate. So there's a portion of it where it's understanding that just because the girl that you're standing next to can do X, Y, or Z a thing, that's not for you. That's not your business. Mm-hmm. And as Maya has pointed out, support your local business. At the end of the night, we had our placements, right? Mm-hmm. We had, um, well, actually, first, after the critiques were done, we had each contestant answer the question of who should go home and why. It's my favorite part. Okay, so what did you think of that entire situation? Like, tell me. It's my favorite, but I think it was so hard in this particular context um, because I didn't already have an answer because, one, I hadn't been there for every week, so I didn't have a particular answer, and especially since all of the people that were involved, I'm trying to be really good about my gender-neutral terms, but Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at it. Um... But all the folks that were involved, um, because they are so vastly different, Mm -hmm. it's really hard to say, well, this person doesn't belong. Right. Because everyone brought something so distinctly 
them and so distinctly different, but was still one of those pillars right. of what drag really is. So you can't really say, well, this girl doesn't belong or this person doesn't belong or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, because that would just be an untrue statement and would right. just make you look like the asshole. But on the other hand, assuming at least that you all have a much better understanding of what may or may not have happened throughout the entirety of the season, because mm-hmm. I like hit and miss, bitch. I like to drink at home because I can only got to walk Hold four or five it. feet mm-hmm. to my bed. Um, but for the times that I have been there, these are the same five folk that I've seen slaying the competition every week. So I'm like, there's nothing that I can even be like, oh, well, this person doesn't belong here because of this, or this person right. doesn't belong here because of this. So hearing and hearing their reasoning? what That's what I was going to be like. What did you think of? Because um, Ru Lin said madam, mm-hmm. right? Um, so was it, wasn't there like three girls that said madam? I think so. Child, them hoes were scared. Yeah. It, yeah, it, it, yeah. So, we had that question. Mm-hmm. It was, it caused some drama. Um, I'm just going to mention it because... Let's do it. I'm just a transparent mm-hmm. bitch. And, like, when Cinder said that one of the reasons why Cinder should be in the top four is because she's motherfucking Cinder Blocks. That was very cringy to me. Very. Because at the end of the day, what it boils down to is, realistically speaking, you all are doing the exact same competition. And even though I understand to some degree this is built on the archetype that Drag Race built, bitch, you're not Sasha Colby. You're not Kennedy Davenport. You're not Latrice. (sighs) You're a girl who's doing a competition in Columbus, Ohio. Like, ma'am, I don't know what level of Lucy LaDuca delusion that you were in the middle of. Let loose, Lucy, let loose. Yeah, let loose that <laughs> demon that's wrapped around your neck, making you think of being like, oh, well, because I'm I'm Cinder Blocks. Okay, ma'am, so... Ma'am, you don't have a whole eyebrow. What are we talking about here? Listen, okay. So, it was very cringy. And to be honest, I feel like that was some Amaya Rose coming up out of her. <laughs> they both my nieces. What they gonna do? Whoop my ass, bitch! That was Amaya Rose coming up out of her pores to come say some bullshit like that. <laughs> I've been doing drag for over a decade. As much as I would love to randomly walk up in there and be like, "Cause I'm fucking Jada Phoenix." I mean, I've heard you sit. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I've said much <laughs> worse. <laughs> But it wasn't no shit like that. <laughs> um, okay, so it was definitely very cringy. Um, and it was... <laughs> it was a grab bag. Who knows? It was one of them random fucking things that you say because you ain't got... Sh- That's like when you start calling fat bitches fat like they don't know they fat. Like, you were just saying shit to say it. <laughs> so that's where I was trying to go. Okay, so I feel like at that moment... I don't know what was going on through Cinder's head, mm. but like when she, when she said that, it literally surprised the fuck out of me, and I was so confused. I was watching back the videos that we recorded of the episode, and you just see my face, bitch. Like, I'm so glad there wasn't a camera on the audience because myself, Isaac, and Cherry all sitting at the same table, hearing that out loud, and then looking at each other for consolation to make sure we all heard the same shit. <laughs> you ever seen three black people confused at the same time? It's like Clue on steroids. Because we were all just like... Um, <laughs> but yes, so that was, um, that was quite uh, actually kind of iconic. Not gonna lie, because that is recorded and Cinder um, definitely <laughs> made a choice. I don't know what was going I don't on. I like you trying to spin this into a positive thing. Like, this <laughs> shit wasn't crazy as hell on Office Rocker. No, bitch. It literally <laughs> was iconic, though, because it everyone was just like... It felt like Tatiana being like, choices. Like, it was wild. Because we were all like, are we all watching the same competition? Because no tea, not that she did poorly. 
in the challenge that I had just watched. Because mm-hmm. that's how I have to judge it. What I just witnessed. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that she did poorly. But we're arguing about who was second worst. Mm-hmm. Because at this point, y'all had already made it clear. If you're not in the top, you're in the bottom. Mm-hmm. And since you already picked the top, bitch, now we're arguing about who's supposed to be in the bottom. Absolutely the fuck not. I... I was just... I have a theory because of the fact that Cinder supposedly was going to go ahead and quit the next day from Drag Master. If oh, she, she would did have bring it up when yeah. she was like, oh, this is my last day or whatever. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, and um, so I wonder if maybe Cinder... Then why'd you waste my time? <sighs> this know... is the same narrative that I'm going to give to any bit... This is my camera. Mm-hmm. All you bitches out there that be in the middle of a fucking competition and be like, oh, well, I'm finna quit. Stop wasting my time. Mine or any other bitch. Stop wasting my time. Because if all you're going to do is is use or lean into you being like, oh, well, I was going to quit anyway. Then you just took up space for no reason. Because mm-hmm. there was a bitch behind you that if you was going to quit anyway, you should have quit at week one or mm-hmm. week two or whenever you got the, the, mm-hmm. the rustling in your shanana that you was going to quit, you should have quit then. And let these girls that wanted to be here and wanted to showcase or wanted to do X, Y, or Z a thing, do they thing. Instead, you over here taking up space because you didn't want to be the girl that get kicked the fuck out. Mind your business and go home. You could have been in the audience, the rest of us, kikiing and drinking and, and kicking it. <laughs> so I definitely think that Cinder was kind of in the mode of like, I'm going to be done anyway, whether I stay or go. So she was kind of just like, fuck it. Um, That's kind of like how I perceived it a little bit. Um, So, yeah. So then Anonymous Mm -hmm. won. The dress code pissed me off. Okay. Like, it was fully watching. um, It felt like watching America's Next Top Model that week. Mm -hmm. When she was like, we were rooting for you. And she still won and it was what it was. But, bitch, this fucking dress code. Was it the fact that it was the flats? Was it the flats? It was the flats as well as, like, I understand that I'm not a seamstress, but there are some things that I know about how fabric moves and what's aesthetically pleasing to look at. Uh Uh-huh. At the end of the day, one, I wish there would have been a slit in in their garment because having a gown that's made out of such a stiff fabric Mm -hmm. as... Um, garment bags and it not being weighed by anything like stones or beading or you know anything like that it's going to move stiff and then it moving stiff as well as the limitation on your mobility because it doesn't stretch Mm -hmm. if there would have been a slit it would have been over like and it wasn't that it was bad like it was a very great garment The, the concept was very well thought out the execution was acceptable. Like, the the idea and the execution were great. But there's those little pieces. And I'm like, oh, I wish this would have been a little different. Or this would have been a little different. Right. But I think, one, they had my favorite. My absolute favorite garment from, from that portion of the challenge. And I liked what, for example, like, I liked what uh, Jack gave. Mm-hmm. But I was just so taken out of the fantasy. One, because what you revealed to was more lackluster than what you already had on. It was like, it would have been like me revealing from a coat that has beads and stones on it to a pencil dress. Right. Like, yes, your body is amazing. And I remember having that body. <laughs> like, your body's amazing. I'm, and then, like, it, it is what it is. But the actual garment, which is the thing you're being judged on, wasn't to the same caliber of the thing you just got out of. It was wild to me. Like, the whole category was wild to me. You got this bitch over here in a burnt-up gown that didn't make no goddamn sense because the story you're trying to tell me and what I'm looking at are two different things. You got this bitch crawling out of a fucking box. (laughs) You got Miss Thing getting stripped up by her mama. Like, I was fully confused. Okay, so, with that being said, 
Anonymous was the winner of the week, and Jack was in the top two with Anonymous. Mm-hmm. And then Matt Which I was, was not a fan of. <laughs> who would you I have? I want to make that blatantly clear. Okay, so mm-hmm. instead of Jack, who would you have had in the top two with Anonymous? Um, <clears throat> wait, I wrote it down. Yes, I'm that girl. Mind your mama's business. Um, I would have had Rulin. Okay. In the top two. Okay. With Anonymous. Fair. fair because fair. I think Rulin was genuinely funny. And the issue that I had when it came to Cinder's jokes that she was that they were making, as well as the same issue that I had with Madam's jokes. I don't like jokes being ripped from other places. Mm, mm -hmm. So you already were slighted for me in the challenge itself just for your dress code not to be able to save you from the performance that you just put on. Gotcha. And with that being said, um, Cinder, Madam, and Rulin were actually in the bottom three and lip synced. And the person that went home was Cinder Blocks. I thought y'all was sending two hoes home. I fully <laughs> thought, and I don't know which one of these, is this my camera? Yeah. I don't know which one of you hoes <laughs> decided that we weren't going to send two hoes home. Because I fully expected the top three. I fully expected the top three. I thought y'all was finna, uh, what, what they call it, shake the dice and steal the rice, bitch, and have a whole top three. <sighs> you know. <laughs> it's probably AJ fault, and we'll discuss that at a later time. But, bitch, <laughs> I fully thought y'all was sending two of them three hoes home. Who would have been the two? For me? Mm-hmm. Madam would have stayed, and the re- both of them hoes would have went home. Okay. Because as much as I could... I did not like the way that the challenge was done. I appreciated the creativity that Madam brought when it came to her. Um, I keep wanting to say runway, and I don't know that's not what y'all call dress it. Code. To her dress code, where she never even made it to the wedding. But she got arrested during Literally. the bachelorette party, where at least everyone else like made it to their wedding, mm. and then something else happened. She was the only contestant that was there that was like, bitch, I never even saw my wedding. I woke up to the back of my eyelids and bars. Like, I fully, one, relate. But two, <laughs> <laughs> um, I really was like, I appreciate the ingenuity to be like, fuck what happened at my wedding. I never saw my wedding. What are you talking about? Exactly. I like that. Even though the silhouette was the same, which I wasn't a fan of, because mm-hmm. it was still that pencil skirt with the peplum, or that pencil skirty kind of gig. Um... I liked the fact that that you went as far as to be like, I never even made it to my wedding. I yeah. did like that. So you would have saved um, just Madam. Okay. Word. And in my opinion, because I'm real big about words, Madam was the only girl that knew all the words of that goddamn song. Okay. Fair. Like, Madam was the only girl that, um, excuse me, Madam was the only girl that knew all the words and how to emote them. That is because yeah. both pieces are very important. Mm-hmm. So even if one of the other two contenders knew all the words, I would have never known from where I was sitting mm-hmm. because y'all weren't giving me the energy that was really required for the song that y'all were doing. The only person that gave me the full fantasy What's of Madam? not getting married today was Madam. Yeah. So I thought y'all were sitting in two of them three hoes home. Yeah, but, you know, we Apparently didn't. you can't make those decisions unira- uh, unilaterally. <laughs> well, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, that was, that was the expulsion. And now our top four are Madam Woods, mm-hmm. um, Jack, mm-hmm. Anonymous, mm-hmm. and Roland Morg. And next week... Um, is the reunion, mm-hmm. and then the week after that, we have the 
finale in which they have a final top four performance, which they have written um, a verse to an original song produced by none other than my lovely fiance and my Augie Bear. His name is Augie Stacks. I yeah, always Augie mention Stacks. it. Yes. You can stream him all on all platforms. And um, so, yeah, he produced and created this song and alongside with AJ. Um, AJ's vocals are on so it. So are all four of them doing the same song? It's the same song. They're just writing their own verse to it. Oh, I'm excited. Very, <laughs> like, it's going to be sickening. So that's the first challenge. Then okay. they have to do an acting challenge, which I wrote the script to. Okay. Um, and then um, after that, they are going to be um, doing a talent portion about their journey during Drag Master. And then their final dress code is going to be the best drag eleganza they can ever bring to the So you're making the them make up for a shitty ass uh, lip syncs they've been yes. doing all goddamn oh, year. No, we <laughs> literally make them work for the fucking win like we make them that. work for that so uh, we're so excited and it's gonna be such a crazy finale so make sure to come out to that i know I'll you're gonna there. be there i know Pumped you're gonna be there i'm not wearing these shoes but i'll it, be there right right show them one more time oh this one yeah oh <laughs> look at those legs legendary you better, you better stop for my hip lock up or oh. something jada hi so I actually have not seen you perform in a while. I do be hiding. I know. <laughs> you you l- clearly said you're a homebody. I am. And listen, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. Our bubbles are bubble and we're safe and when we're safe, right? So, I would love to see you perform soon as well, I'm sure, the audience. So please let us know what are some upcoming events or dates or where can we find you? So, first of all, just follow my, my little Facebook, because I'm an old lady, okay? okay. I got Facebook. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm about an Instagram bitch. I don't know a whole lot about that. Okay. But I am on Facebook. Okay. Primarily, so I know, if I feel like an old lady with dementia, because I just go on Facebook to find out where I'm supposed to be, because other folks post where I'm supposed to be, and then I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. But um, I do know that Guy Naturi is holding a benefit for the, I'm trying to make sure I say all the words right, which I probably still won't, but um, it's the American Society Against Suicide or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. I probably fucked it up four times by now, but... It's a suicide prevention. Oh, no, it is a suicide prevention hotline. I love how I started it and then fucked it up See, still. You, you got there. You got the there. The suicide prevention hotline. Yeah. Um, She's doing a fundraiser for that on Saturday the 3rd okay. that I will be at. And then there is an um, competition Ooh. that I'll be doing uh-huh. as a contestant. Uh-huh. And I'm going to leave that for y'all to figure out across Facebook and whatnot. But I'll be doing that as well later that day okay. on the 3rd. So if you want to see a lady in her element, um, mm. that's the place to find her. Mm. Outside of that, just, you know, see it, look out on Facebook like I do. Okay. To find out where I'm supposed to be. And <laughs> what is your Facebook? So my Facebook is Jada Phoenix, but it's spelled phonetically. Okay. Which for some of you hoes that don't know what that means. Um, it's spelled the way it sounds. J. So it's J A D A F E N I X. Go look for her. There's a picture of me, probably drunk somewhere, like I am now. Um, and be on the lookout. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cheers to that. And you don't have Instagram, right? Mm. Mm. Do you? Okay, so I do. Okay, but do you use it? But my it? kids made it for me. Mm-hmm. And I don't really know how to use it. Okay, so... So it's just physically present, and that's why they be posting pictures of me uh-huh. afterwards. But I don't... I don't even know how to log into it. So never mind on that one. Never mind. But you can find me on Facebook. Okay, so <laughs> what about... What about... What about your... Um, Cash App, Venmo. My Cash App, my mm-hmm. Venmo, and my Facebook are all the same. They're all J A D A F E N I X with the cash symbol or the at symbol. Either way, that's where you can find a bitch. See, see, 
see how easy that you is? had to corner the market at the beginning when they started making drag queens use their real names oh listen luckily my run my like my drag name and my boy name both start with jay so we, i can get away with it at least i love it i love it so now you know everyone Make sure to follow. That's how you evade the IRS. I mean, the um, uh, the the Facebook Nazis. Not the IRS, bitch. I don't know nothing about that. I pay my taxes. Who's the Earth? <laughs> I don't know the Earth. I don't know the Earth either. Oh, nurse. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh my gosh, crazy over here. But yes, make sure to follow Jada Phoenix Lorez at every single platform or the one platform that she currently Un. has. Uno. Oh, fuck. I'm still fucking it up. Un is French. Son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uno. That's a card game. <laughs> this is kidding. You're right. I was going to swing on you, bitch. <laughs> Gaslighting, right? Gaslighting. <laughs> You already did me with this fucking challenge. Now you want to do me over here in the, in the privacy of your home. Listen, that's where you can really get out. Like, mm. That's not fair. I got on shoes I can't take off easily. <laughs> At least your ears are magnet, though, in case you got to take them and throw them. Just quick. Just I'm already it. dealing with your fucking cat over here <laughs> trying to get me. Listen, that's what they're trained for. <laughs> Clearly, to attack the blacks. <laughs> 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 Major Q, yeah. put this in the video. <laughs> I mean, Puma is black. I can't. Okay. Oh sh- If they were to make a movie about your life, okay, who would play you, and what would be the title of the movie? If they were to play a movie about my life, right. Yeah, if they were to make Who a movie about me. Yeah, yeah, and what's the title? And what's the title? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Drugs and Drag. Okay. Is the name of the fucking movie. Oh, I like that. Um, Angela Bassett has to play me. Because the only person with the arms to play me. <laughs> Bitch! It'll yes. be very interesting to see her trying to be in drag as a boy. <laughs> to be mirror opposite of me. <laughs> Because I look like her in drag. Um, but yeah, Angela Bass has to play me. And it'll be called Drugs and Drag in the Phoenix Nest. Okay, bitch. Drugs and Drag in, in the, the Phoenix, Phoenix Nest. Nest. In a theater near you. Coming soon. I would soon. say Tina Turner has to play my mom, but now that whole day. Right. So we got to mm-hmm. rest in peace, queen. Yes. Um, we got to deal with that now. Right, right. So now I got to find somebody... And Cicely Tyson on her way out, too. Oh, I mean, but you can still get her before she go. You right. You right. No. Do um, Miss Thing from How to Get Away with Murder. Oh, that Viola. Has, Viola Davis has yes. to be Yes. Viola, Viola Davis, Davis has to be from, Mama Josie. Yes. Viola Davis down, bitch. This is be Viola I'm Davis. I'm sending the letter <laughs> now, bitch. Angela Bassett. <laughs> Together mother and, and daughter. daughter. <gasps> Imagine that would be a fucking iconic. Oh my god! I mean, and drugs and drag in the, the Phoenix Nest. Drugs yeah. and drag in the Phoenix Nest. Mm. That's what we call my house for the last. Not drugs and drag, but the Phoenix <laughs> Nest. That's what we call my house for the last decade. Okay. Yes. Because they're also like, where are you at? The Phoenix Nest. The Phoenix Nest. I mean, duh. Girl, watching Netflix. Exactly. If Drinking you know, you crowd. know. <laughs> Exactly. That's cute. I love that answer. Oh, I love that. I would watch that. Bitch, because it's sickening, no? Bitch, <laughs> sickening, no? Yes, motherfucking chorizo. <laughs> but, but that's the guess. I'm like, these are things that I think, being a pageant girl, these are things I think about to be like, I might get asked this one day. I need to have an actual answer for these things. Always got to be prepared. Because it was very, I thought about season two. Uh-huh. Of Drag Race. Uh-huh. And they were talking about the memoirs. Yes. Same difference. Memoirs of a geisha. Jujube, one of my favorites. But, I was like, same difference. Or Dreams of a, of a Golden Child by Jessica Wilde. Which it would be Drugs and Drag <laughs> in the Phoenix Nest. Yes. <laughs> would be the name of the memoir. The, the fucking movie. movie the store. The podcast. <laughs> the video game. 
<laughs> all of it. Everything. The fucking trilogy. It would be like The Sims, but with cross dressers. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Imagine. They would get their life. <laughs> Except for the part, bitch. There's a man that be on um on the YouTube's. I think he on on the other ones too. But he on YouTube, uh-huh. and he inbreeds his to see how crazy they gonna look in the Sims video game. Not real. Oh, people. bitch! I was like, Jesus Christ! No, not real people in the <laughs> Sims game. Got it. So he inbreeds them in the Sims game because he'll be like, Well, how do I get rid of this nose? And it just uh, progressively gets worse. Oh, I feel like I. <laughs> it's <laughs> fucking wild. Once I'm really high, I would love to watch all of that. Oh, that would bitch, be great. I have, that's what I go to sleep to. And I'm just sitting there, just scrolling. I can't. And then I eventually fall asleep, so I'm listening to the same 30 second video for the next nine hours. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Okay, see, now you know. You gotta send the Sims over. Know. Over. It's trash. I'm not gonna lie. Because I also listen to, um, there's this dude who is on YouTube. His name's Comic Storian. Okay. And he does all the, like, Marvel and DC comics. Oh, I have, like, a multitude of playlists of people that I'm just like, I need to go to sleep? Turn on. <laughs> he covers okay. the whole fucking arc. <laughs> Of, uh, like, games, movies, video ga- Do you know I re-listened to The House of M? Which is a three-hour recap. I fell asleep, woke up, remember what part we were at, fell back asleep. <laughs> woke up, went to work. I can't. It gets me together. Okay, see. Because I'm a huge comic book nerd. Oh, oh! huge comic book nerd. But the issue for me is, is that I never really have the time anymore to sit down and like read them. I love that you just like, cover. you were like, I'm taking shit off, bitch. <laughs> oh, because I'm, I'm serious about my comic books, bitch. <laughs> um, so actually part of my fucking name is the fact that I couldn't, so my mom's a fucking bitch. So she, I asked her how to spell Phoenix uh-huh. because that was my nickname growing up. But it was based off of Jean Grey's Phoenix. Gotcha. But I didn't spell it because I was like, how the fuck do you spell that? Because it doesn't look the way that it's, at, that it's actually spelled. Oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't sound the way that it's actually spelled. And so my mom goes, well, sound it out. And that's how my name came out. Is that it's spelled the way it sounds. <laughs> Okay. And so I was Work. like, well, you're a bitch, because now I'm stuck with this for the rest of my life. Hey, <laughs> it's unique, though. It works. I mean, true Bitch, you make it work. But then I found out that's how you spell it in Spanish. Is it? It's exactly how you spell it in Spanish. How do you... S- Phoenix? It's F-E-N-I-X. No, but, like, is that how you say the, the bird in Spanish? Oh, I, that part I don't know. But I do know that that's how you... Well, how you spell it in Spanish. Oh. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> and then I was offended. Because I really thought I was out here breaking the mold and shit. Senorita Jada Phoenix Flores. Hemos llegado al segmento del programa en donde hemos terminado. I don't know what you just said to me, but it makes me want to punch you in the nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> Why the nostrils, though? It hurts more. Especially yeah, I if can... you do it from the bottom. That will actually break my nose. I'm aware. Yeah. See, that's how I learned to punch. <laughs> <laughs> they are open palm in the throat. <laughs> Literally. So if you're going to ever get in a fight, make sure you like yeah, push them down to the floor. at all costs. Put your knees on each <laughs> arm, right? And you're on top of them. And that's when you put your hand on their neck. And then that's when you go into the nose. I love that's where you stopped. I just started learning the anatomy of human beings to be like, what hurts the most? And if need I do love be, how to um, excuse them from this lifetime as fast as humanly possible. Because I'm a very dainty lady, in case you were unaware. Mm. In the case y'all were I unaware. Tell. I'm a very dainty lady. Mm. Can tell. And um, I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, how can I get the job done? 
See, Quickly. and this is why women murder. And that's exactly. fine. There's a whole series about there it. There's why women kill. I love that. I yeah. love that show. And this is exactly how we figured it out. Yeah. Aqua Tafana. Exactly. <laughs> I want to find a lot of things, too. We'll talk about this afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, we have reached the end of our episode. Jada, thank you so much thank for, for being part me. of this. I had so much fucking fun. As did I. You are also, your such boyfriend a makes really good drinks. Oh, right. And I'll be having... A, I'm sorry, your fiancé. I was going to say, I was like, first of all... Let me not disrespect him in this fashion before he be trying to my fight me. Beyond, my Uggy Beyond. My Uggy Beyond. Your fiancé makes amazing drinks. Yes, he does. He's also a very nice producer. He didn't yeah. yell at me once yet. <laughs> he yet, being the operative listen. He word. typically keeps <laughs> us in check. He's like, he will. So I I learned his cues now. So. Oh, I noticed. I just started following your lead. And I was like, <laughs> if she doesn't argue, I'm not gonna argue. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here. Well, I truly appreciate it. And I'm so happy that I got to know a little bit more about you and just be within your joy and presence. And I'm sure this is not going to be the last time you'll be involved with Drunk I will hope not, because I will hope y'all to get tired of being scared to invite me back as a judge, because them hoes no, be terrified. No, it's not even that. It's that we have a long-ass list of judges that we've been trying to get. And Fuck it's like, hoes. we don't want to, like, we want to give hoes. everyone a chance first. Fuck them hoes. <laughs> Go back to the OG. Ah, Fuck the okay. hoes. You're right, you're right, you're right. You're right, you're right, you're right. Okay. Well, it depends on who them hoes is. Wait, let me start there. Depend on who them hoes is. Fuck if them you hoes. them hoes, message Jada. <laughs> Don't set them people up like Because <laughs> you will have hoes in my inbox getting cussed out for reasons they don't even understand. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, never mind. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's not that's yeah. not good mm-mm. for your safety. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> Thank you so much once again. And everyone, please make sure to follow Jada on Facebook. Facebook. I'm an old bitch. Oh, At least up here. <laughs> Just <Facebook>. old bitch. <laughs> and then also make sure to go and follow Jada anywhere, wherever she is performing that you see on Facebook. Just follow the trail of empty liquor bottles. And then you'll find Jada. It will most likely be um, a crown apple. Um, mm-hmm. So that's fine. Um, and give the bitch some money. Because why not? The bitch is beautiful. Sickening fucking performer. Oh, always, always true to her fucking self. And always, always just a vibe. Well, so I fucking love you. And thank you so much for watching. And always remember, you're beautiful. Unless you're not. Unless you're not, then you could just use makeup because that's what I do. Bye, everyone. You know that I'm the boss.